What's happening, everybody? <clears throat> Thank you, everybody, for tuning in to this live feed where we're going to bring uh, Rusty Taylor in, the builder of this awesome instrument here. See, we got quite a few people on. Okay. So what we have here is a three-string electric cigar box guitar made by Rusty Taylor of uh, Secondhand Smoke. And he's just uh, south of Atlanta. And uh, I've been knowing Rusty a little while. I say uh, it wasn't too long after I got into the game that I started running into Rusty on uh, some uh, Facebook groups and whatnot. And um, <clears throat> I've played his cigar box festival he puts on and uh, whatnot. We just became good friends, and I didn't have a three string. A cigar box guitar, a four string, a six string, but I didn't have, you know, a uh, three string. Um, <clears throat> which, when people want to say, want to build something, you know, and, and come to me, you know, I try to make sure I get things that are built kind of different from each one, just so, you know, I don't have a bunch of the same kind of configurations or builds. And I have a couple of cool guitars. Uh, one coming from my buddy Chuck H., um, who's on, and I got another. New interesting one coming from Rob Warble and Adam Bomb Guitars. And these are just wonderful builders and people who um, want to put their pieces of musical art in my hands. Um, so we're going to talk about Rusty's a little bit. And we're going to bring Rusty on, online to talk in more detail. So like I said, we have a three string. And um, it's equipped with the, the new lace matchbook pickup let me talk about this real quick because as you can tell i've talked about it before the match book pickup is so thin it's it's on a, a slab of a, a aluminum about that thick and right where their striker is here is actually a magnet then there's another magnet underneath there and uh, in between it is just a two little copper spool transformers um and basically this is built to split the coil in the sense of single coil on a humbucker. So I'll show you that real quick. I'm going to um, just show you all the single coil, the single split, uh, which is one of the um, magnets going as well as one of the copper transformers. Bill, this is the one. Yes, this was made for me for Nam, and uh, um, we're just going over. So here's a single coil sound, which... it up and and bring the coils together so you can I'll just strum it and you can see the different single coil to split single humbucker so that's a wonderful feature of this pickup so it's one thing I want to talk about. And the next thing, we have this awesome graphics that uh, are on this neck. Now, these are made by friends of mine called Neck Illusions, and I've talked about them in the past as well. And they make a micro-woven uh, fabric decal thing for your uh, fretboard that is uh, just 100% cosmetic and just makes your guitar stand out. And uh, you can check out Neck Illusions dot com for more information about that how to personalize this is the first cigar box guitar that this has been featured on and uh they'll measure it to a t and it just fits on there and it can be peeled off and uh, a couple of things you know rusty uh, machines these bridges as well as um the string tree retainers this is a zero fret so um just want to show you a little bit more he's got this unique bracing and just this unique things that he does um, so let me get comfortable here in the chair and we'll bring Rusty on board <clears throat> and we'll have to talk about, you know, a little bit of his process and, uh, how he does things. Let's see here. All right. We got him. Awesome. Right. Hey, what's up, bud? Not much. That worked, surprisingly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm still, you know, kind of new about this bringing on people live. I've only done it one other time, but uh, 
I'm glad you could spend some time with us. So, hey, so, I mean, just let's let's tell everybody, uh, first of all, like, what got you into making the cigar box guitars? My brother plays guitar. I never picked it up. And uh, so probably about four years ago, I'm sitting around. I'm, I'm watching videos like everybody else had started doing about four or five years ago. And, you know, you run across you know, JJ and then Shane Spill. Shane Spill's really the guy that really got me going on it. Yeah. Uh, because he's, he sells it. I, I mean, let's just, you know, he sells it. He enjoys doing it. And, um, you know, I've actually watched Shane get better at what he does. And I think yeah. all of them. So I'm sitting there going, well, do I want to make a gas can guitar? And then I research that. And then you find out that there's actually somebody making gas can guitars. And yeah. You know, well, and nobody was really making cigar box guitars, you know, it's still a hobby thing. So I said, all right, so, you know, I'm, I'm a prototyping machinist at, uh, at a university here in Atlanta and I have a shop and, you know, I've got a, I've got a table saw and I've got a mill and I've got a lathe and I've got yeah. an electronic shop and I'm there going, well, I've got everything I need to spend a little time after work and it wouldn't take me long to, to put something together. And so I told my wife, I said, I got to order some parts. You know, it's going to be 24 or $25 worth of parts. Yeah. And I'm going to buy a guitar. And she, you know, she looked at me funny. <laughs> and, you know, you know, two days later, you know, my, my, my gift package comes from Giddy, you know, yeah. three two, you know, uh, a wiring harness with a single coil in it. And uh, so I had planned on, so, all right, let's see what I can do with this. So, uh, I put everything together. I actually looked up on Stu Mac and I made a fretboard for it, but I didn't have any fret wires. So I, and my budget was about $25 and it was shot. So, um, the first one that I made had nails, finished nails for frets. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so, I've been there once. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the last time I did that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I put that guitar together and surprisingly enough, it played. Yeah. And and for me, not knowing how to play guitar, I picked it up and pretty much started playing guitar. Yeah, that's one bit, thing, you know, know that we I've teach. Said. But it's easy, you know, if you learn a couple little things on it, it really can, you know, anybody can play, you know, a little bit once you learn that little bit. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, within 15 minutes, I was playing Wild Thing, and that was nothing but – you know, yeah. barring some chords and uh, figuring something out, you know. Yeah. So, um, flush with my success for actually making a guitar, I sat down and kind of figured out what the next step was. Mm -hmm. and the next step was is really I need to make something that's got real frets on it. Mm -hmm. And so, I, you know, in my mind, I'm planning the second build out, you know. And then once... I built my second one with real frets. I'd figured out a couple of things. Yeah. And I'd figured out that, that it's hard to find cigar boxes all the time. You know, the cigar shops were catching on that we were getting yeah. overflow and everything. Um, and I will tell you the first guitar that I built was built out of some whiteboard. I built the box because I didn't get the, uh, uh, a box out of a cigar shop. And the one that I did, yeah. get, I made an amp out of. Yeah, cool. so I yeah. figured, well, crap, I need an amp. So I made an amp, too, and I made it I just out of parts I had laying around. So, excuse me. So the second one comes out pretty good, and then all of a sudden there's this big world of groups out there. You know, you can yeah. join an amp group. You can join, you know, any kind of group you want to. So, I mean, I'm still members of probably 10 or so groups. Yeah. And, um and so I'd gotten pretty good at it. I'd gotten the budget down to where I could build a guitar. Anybody can build a guitar for 25 bucks. Yeah. I mean, that's just, that's just the way it is. But you end up mm -hmm. building the same guitar over and over again. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I'd gotten a couple of, through the, the, the six months of building up to do four or five guitars. And I built a couple of commissions right away. Uh, for friends, just kind of like some of the first things I did. I'll let them pick out their hardware and all that other stuff. So um, 
but then I got to where I could build a guitar in about two days. Yeah. Because it was, you order part, you cut your box, you do yeah. it, blew up, and then the next day you're kind of finishing things up, and then you're ready. Yeah. And so um, it started to be, I could still sell them, but it was like, you know, it was right in the beginning. Nobody knew who I was. And to tell you, they were suspect, you know, quality in the beginning anyway. Yeah, of there's course. Of <laughs> Me too. Yeah. There's a few of them out there. If they ever come back my way, I'll give you a new guitar. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So, anyway, uh, I, I started building and, and, and I, and I had to talk with my wife and, you know, I just, you should, budgetary for a hobby, it was getting expensive because I wasn't yeah. covering enough, you know, every time I build. And so then I started building, trying to find the cheapest way to build. So I did that for a while. And so I ended up with five guitars, which were great guitars, but I ended up stuck with them because they were built differently. They were the, the neck on top type. Yeah. And and I'm telling you this story to tell you the story how we figured out how to do it the other way. So I was using very thin boxes because those were the ones that the guys at the cigar shop, uh, he's not going to be able to do anything with these. Yeah. So I built some, uh, what they call, they used to call them plain and simple guitars where the neck yeah. left the top. Yeah. And, um, so I, that worked out good, but, you know, they didn't sell because they didn't look like a guitar, like a stick in a box. Mm -hmm. So I've got all these thin boxes, like, uh, you know, these little punch boxes, you know, they're only about an inch and a quarter uh, and those, um, feral flying pigs or whatever, they're really thin too. So I said, well, I'm just bolting something to the top of the box. Well, why don't I just add one piece of wood, stack it out and go around the back and I'll use yeah. the box. And so that kind of opened up my, my building a little bit. And so if, and, and I started learning about guitars too. And that's the biggest thing that you do when you start doing this is you yeah. start learning about guitars. And so some of the, the best blues guitars are ES 335s. And the reason yeah. that they, they'll screech at you a little bit, they're a little raw, but the calls are hollow on the inside. Yeah. You know, and everybody had gotten to where that they were just going to stick through and then they would pin the pickup to the the stick through, basically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, in effect, you end up with a solid body guitar. Yeah. So. Yeah. So, and then, and, and I've been doing stuff with flat pickups for a while. So, flat pickups start coming on. And this style of building is, is just made for flat pumps. Yeah, because of a thinner box, yeah. it just it just lends itself to it. So yeah. basically, what you do is you build your neck around your box, and then you build something like this. It's just a piece of wood, and it's got two quarter twenty. Okay. And you just bolt it. So basically, I made a bolt on neck for a box. Yeah. And so, and then kind of come up with making my own. And here's the other thing I started. I said, I got a machine shop. I've been a machinist for 35 years. What can I make that I'm buying? Yeah. yeah. So then it comes up, well, I can make bridges pretty easily. Yeah. And so this is what he's got there. And so this just sandwiches the box. Yeah. To this centerpiece. And then this goes to the, you know, this gets to the brace in the back, and then you've got a solid connection there. And yeah, like this is a solid instrument. It, it looks like nothing, too, doesn't it? I, I mean, look, there's a lot less there than what most people build. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then the last thing I do is after everything gets pinned together, I put a line of glue on this, yeah. stick it in, assemble it, and then it stiffens everything up. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, it's definitely cool how you've got the heel, how it just runs into it. I mean, I remember when I first saw this, you know, I just thought that was, you know, such a, a great idea. And, you know, when I saw this, I had two uh, 
like you know those traveler size uh, uh, first act guitars, those little mm -hmm. kid ones. Well, I like put them on three, some three quarter or something. Yeah, they? yeah. Well, I had put them on some boxes, and the heel had, you know, come over to where that overlapped. So mm -hmm. what I did was I, I that kind of inspired me to stick a piece of wood back there, so I had more meat for that neck, you know, to go into. And I mean, that's a great idea. I mean, that's just. We got Ben Giddy watching, John McKee. We got a bunch of people I've been watching, so cool. Yeah. So yeah, and you also do these, uh, these, uh, I guess these string, these string trees because you do the zero frets. So I guess that's your string trees. And the other thing too is I started looking at my guitars and I go, what do I need to? What can I eliminate that's causing me troubles? And yeah. look, and, and sitting there filing a nuts, not my thing. And so I started looking at the zero fret stuff, and I said, well, I'm still going to have to have guides. And so everybody does uh, a, a pretty simple one, just two eye bolts and then a piece of thread and rod through there. And, and you can yeah, be yeah, yeah. anywhere you want to. But then again, I said, well, crap, I've got a lathe. And uh, I can go to Home Depot, and I can buy some quarter-inch brass, and I can, make it, I can make it my own. And mm -hmm. so I kind of figured it out, and, you know, uh, all the information you need to build this stuff is 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 on the internet. You just look up, yeah. and find out, you know, what's the standard string spacing for a, a Fender 25.5 Strat or, you know, yeah. and, and they'll give it to you. And since yeah. Ben is watching. Yeah, let's not forget about Cigar Box Nation is very helpful, too. A lot oh, of yeah. That too. And there's all kinds since of Ben things. is watching. Oh, yeah. But, but <laughs> Ben? You know, you actually put up a blueprint for this on your site. Wow! So I there don't, is I a blueprint. Would have made them. You're... Yeah, <laughs> there's a blueprint. So basically, you go and you look at their um, their slot for this to order this. It has three pictures there. It has a picture of it installed. Yeah, picture of it just sitting there. And then a blueprint. <laughs> so, I mean, I change a few, but basically the width and the length is the exact same thing that's on the their website. My so side, and I use, my I use one, are different. Huh? Yeah. I yeah, use one for uh, that one build, uh, for that resonator build. I, uh, they're great bridges, man. Yeah. I mean, but it's... It, you know, and they're different. You, you wanted a resonator bridge that was was adjustable, so I had to sit there and think for about you know half a day. And I said, "Well, if we do <laughs> play." <laughs> yeah, yeah. The guy was very happy with that guitar, so it was. Oh uh, yeah. So. So. So let me ask you real quick what you think about the lace pickup, and you know, you you can be honest as much as you want, even though I'm married to them right now. But I uh, love the boys. Uh, they are, I tell you what, um, I build a lot of guitars that have a Maniac pickup on it, which is the, the thin bucker from, yeah. from Marty Talbot. Mm -hmm. Right. And then I've done a fair amount of lace builds. And I'll, I'll tell you that if you want a really raw sounding um, guitar sound, the cigar box guitar sound, use Marty's. If you want yeah. something clean and recordable and controllable, the lace is the way to go. Because Mark potted, yeah. so you get a little bit of box sound and they'll, they'll wail. I just not, I, I love them yeah. because they, they'll wail. But with the lace ones, yeah. um, you can drive them hard and you get the clean drive sound. Um, and then you can, turn your gain back on them a little bit and you can finger pick with them a little bit and you know they're yeah. versatile and and yeah. I, I think i, would agree I think that, i think it's 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 whatever you want but yeah. you know but the only i will tell you the only drawback that uh to a lace pickup is is it's got a one inch long stub hanging out the back of it and so some of the boxes that I've been building with are seven, uh, three quarters on the inside. Yeah. And I, I'll either. Yeah, that makes sense. 
Yeah. And the only thing that I would tell them to do is to turn that stub sideways so it's shorter. Because it comes straight out the bottom, and then you have to, like the one that you're in, barely made a 90-degree turn yeah. out of there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, can see, I, can see, I can see where, because, you know, I, I don't have one uh, uninstalled here, but, you know, people don't really realize, you know, it's basically just a slab of aluminum with basically a piece about that thick, about that long, you know, you just drill a hole it's and you just kind of seat it down in there with double stick. It's about as big as my thumb and it's exactly one inch yeah. long. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and, and so you know, got to... I've been really happy you gotta, with the... Uh, you got to make a turn with that pigtail. So you need an inch and an eighth inside your box to yeah. be able to do anything with it. That's the only thing yeah. that I'm sitting there going, yeah. I wish they would have shortened it or brought the wires out part, uh, parallel to the pickup or something. That's the only thing that I've, yeah. I've noticed. But, um, you know. Which would make sense in a thinner box scenario, totally. Yeah, 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 totally. yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, th I think that if you look at the thing, it's about three quarters of a diameter, but it's an inch. Yeah. It's almost like yeah. I turn it sideways. Yeah. No, it, yeah. Because the thing about and, it, you know, I, go I, I've it. gotten really, you know, kind of fond of the pickup just because of this guitar, you know, and the, and the yeah. other ones I've used, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the mini humbucker, you know, and this pickup, you're, you're right. I mean, you know, I can utilize a lot just through the amp. You know, and, and yeah. you know, get clean or, or nasty sounds, you know. Yeah. 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 I mean, the, I really like the, it, man. Thing, I forgot. But, I forgot. When... Go for it. Oh, uh, you're, you're kind of stuttering. There we go. I think we're good. Yeah, I had to let it catch up. Uh, I mean, it's 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 apples and oranges. It's I mean, there are some situations that I that I that I wouldn't use anything but Marty's pickups. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just yes. The the there are yeah. certain situations that I know that if somebody plays professionally, I would I would recommend if somebody wants to spend the extra money, get the lace. Yeah, and, and and you're going to have less problems with yeah. the knowledge that you already have. If you're bringing six string knowledge, and you're trying to marry it to, um, you know, these three string blues and all this other stuff, you're going to be more comfortable with something that doesn't seem like it's on the edge all the time. Yeah, yeah, something with you know, it's it's you're going to have a, a kind of a parallel sound to go from. You know, it's yeah. like. Your six string Fender Pro sounds like this with your, your whatever okay. lace pickup. So, you know, if you're going to play cigar box guitar, you know, and, and, and personally, you know, I travel a lot and play. So, obviously, I need something that I can beat the hell out of and it still do exactly, you know, what I need it to do. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah man. You know, it's, it's one of those things where it's a better mousetrap. But there's still this great mousetrap out there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, what kind of mousetrap do you like? You know, it's up to you. Yeah. But anyway, I mean, a lot of a lot of the things on my guitar are driven by the fact that it needed to take me longer to build them. I need to slow down and 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 do things a little bit differently. And then yeah, like and and what has happened is is. I think my guitars look different than everybody else's. Yeah. I mean, of course. you know, so there's, there's a little bit more me in there. And, and, and I like that too. Yeah. So. Well, Rusty, I, if I feel like, uh, you gave people tons of information and I'm probably going to let you go and then just play this thing out for a little bit. And, uh, you know, I'm just going to show it off, and you can check out Secondhand Smoke on Facebook and talk to Rusty about getting something built. And, uh, again, we have that the neck illusions on there. That just did turn out really good on there, didn't it? Oh, it's the right color and everything. 
Yeah, yeah, they they did pretty good on that. So I'm going to let you go, Rusty. I'm going to play us out a little bit. All right, brother? Have a good one tonight. You too, man. Thank you for uh, spending some time with us tonight. All right. Have a good one. You too. Talk to you soon, buddy. All right. So, again, thank you all for um, checking out. This is going to be something I'm going to probably start to. I have a couple other guitars on the way from uh, some other builders, and I have a, a few here in the house that we're, uh, we'll probably do one of these segments with Chris McKinney at a fun guy mode out of Long Beach, as well as Rob Warble out of Destin, Florida, and uh, as well as the other new guitars that we have coming. And so remember to check out Rusty Taylor, Secondhand Smoke. He's in South Atlanta. This is the guitar, again, he built for me. And uh, I'm going to play you out a little bit. Oh, yes, and not to forget Georgia Cigar Box Guitar Fest is in September. And... Uh, you can check that out. What is the exact date there, Rusty? Uh, go ahead and uh, type it in there because I don't have my calendar right in front of me. But I'm going to, there it is, September 22nd. I'll be there. So I'm going to play you out a little bit on uh, the single coil. We'll start out with that and we'll go into the humbucker again. <laughs> Cool. We'll go back to the humbucker here. <clears throat> 